This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be looking at some cursed Python snippets, starting with my favorite, implicit string concatenation. Imagine you have a list in Python. So we have a variable called a, which is a list of type string. And inside here, we're going to add a, b, c, d, e, and f. Next, we're going to try to print this or the length of this list. And what you're going to notice as a result is that we're going to get four as an output, even if we entered six elements. And this is all thanks to implicit string concatenation. If you are new to Python, you probably missed the fact that I forgot a few commas. And this is crucial if we want to keep it as six elements. As you can see now, when we run this, we get six elements as the length. If we go back to what we had earlier without the commas and just print the list, you'll notice that Python used implicit string concatenation on B and C and E and F. And that's why we got four elements as an output. Personally, I find this to be one of the most cursed features of Python. It's where I make all my mistakes usually because this is human error and Python does not warn you about this. Moving on to curse snippet number two using try and accept for control and flow. In this example, we will have a and b, which is equal to one and zero. And here I'm going to try to get the results of a divided by b. And if anything goes wrong, we're going to accept the exception, if I can spell that, and set the result to zero. Then we can easily just print that result. And what we should get as an output is zero because dividing one by zero causes a zero division error triggering the accept block. Otherwise, if we were to change this to one, you'll notice that the result will actually be the result we tried to divide. Cursed snippet number three, multiple assignment using the same name. In this example, I'm going to create two text variables and we're going to assign it the value of eggs and ham. Now, when we print text and text, what you're going to notice is that we're not going to get eggs and ham as an output. What we're going to end up with is ham. And this happens because we're using the same variable name for both, which means it has to pick one at the end. And in this case, ham was the last value assigned to text. So it's going to use that for both of them. Up next, we have cursed snippet number three. And in this example, I'm going to create some data, which will contain the value of a1 and b2. And the type annotation for this would look something like string and string because this is a tuple after all. But that's not really the cursed part. The cursed part is that we can create a dictionary using this tuple just by passing it in. And what we're going to get as an output is this dictionary over here with A as the key, one as the value, B as the key, and two as the value. And since strings are iterable, dictionary knows exactly how to unpack them and put them into a dictionary. Cursed snippet number five, the multiple comparison riddle. For this example, I'm going to create a variable called comparison of type boolean, and that's going to equal the square brackets equal to the square brackets equal to the square brackets, and all of these are empty. What do you think the output's going to be? If you use pure logic, you might think that this will evaluate to true because they are both equal, but these are not equal. So as a result, we should end up with false. But when we run this, what you're going to notice is that we end up with true. And that's because Python handles chain comparisons slightly differently than in other languages. The way Python treats these is like this. Empty square brackets are equal to empty square brackets and empty square brackets are equal to empty square brackets. This is how Python sees it under the hood. And what we see is this. If you want this to return false, you'd have to wrap these in parentheses. Then this would return true and this comparison would return false. Cursed feature number six, the pistol operator. And this is not an operator and it's not even called the pistol operator, but this is a name that I will always use for it because it looks like an upside down pistol. And right now that just sounds like a bunch of words, I'm sure. So let's recreate it. Asterisk underscore comma equals some text such as Bob. This is valid Python syntax. And when we print the underscore, what you're going to notice is that Bob was dissected. Or to be more technical, Bob was unpacked and placed into a list. 
So essentially, if you are familiar with how Python's unpacking syntax works, we're just using the bare minimum to make it work. Something that would make this more easy to understand is giving it a variable name such as letters. And now we can use letters as a variable name. And when we run it, we'll get the exact same output. We can also add another element to this tuple and say last letter. Now this will absorb the first two letters and the last letter will absorb the last letter. So we can print letters and last letter. And when we run this, we will get B, O, and B. Since the last letter contains only one element, it's going to return to us a string. But if it ever contains more than one element, it will return to us a list of that element. So going back to the pistol operator, it's really an oversimplified version of the unpacking syntax that Python gives us. Up next, we have cursed feature number seven. And for this example, we will create a result of type integer and add one plus plus minus 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 plus plus minus 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 plus plus minus plus minus plus one. And we will print that result. As you can see, as an output, we're going to get two. Why is that? What is this? Why am I still coding in Python? Why haven't I been fired? Since Python doesn't have the increment operator and the decrement operator, we're kind of free to use this any way we like, or at least to add and subtract. A better way to see this is that we're typing in one plus and using this as the prefix operator. So here we have plus, minus, 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 and four minuses equal a plus, or you can even call them negative signs. And as you can see, we still have an even amount of negatives, so that equals a plus, and we have two more negatives. And if you put those together, what you get is another plus. So right here we have one plus one. Since you can add as many of these in front of an integer as you want. It's no different than doing one plus plus one or one plus one. This means that you can also type in one minus minus minus, which will be converted to one plus minus one or negative one. And as a result, we're going to get zero. But again, you can make this as silly as you like. You can add as many pluses and minuses as you wish, and Python is still going to compile your trash code. Now, curse snippet number eight is going to use what we just learned. Here we're going to type in underscore equals one, double underscore equals two, triple underscore equals three. The logic is simple enough. Now we can type in result of type integer equals underscore minus minus underscore, underscore, minus, 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 underscore, 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 minus, minus, underscore, plus, minus, underscore, plus, underscore, underscore. And then we can print the result. And what we should get as an output is whatever this evaluates to. But imagine your colleagues see this in your code. They're absolutely going to flip out. And since we know the result is two, we can just type in two here and be friendly to our colleagues so that they know that the result of this Morse code is two. Moving on to curse snippet number nine, IIFE, which is also known as an immediately invoked function expression, which is a terrible tongue twister for me. I had to record that at least six times. Anyway, to create this IIFE, we're going to import from date time, the date and the time. Then we're going to create a Lambda decorator. You heard me correctly, which takes an underscore and executes that underscore immediately, or calls that underscore immediately. Then we can type in def start, which returns a string, grab the current date and time, which will equal date time dot now. And what we're going to return is the f string of now formatted to percent %c. Next, we can print the start. And what you're going to see is that we're going to get the current start time back as soon as we run the script. We do not need to run this code ever. It's going to run automatically each time we run the script. Now you probably have a lot of questions like, why don't you just create a variable from the get-go called start, take this trash over here, or let's start with f string and paste it directly inside here, and then maybe call it start time. Then we can print this start time, and what we should get as an output is the current date and time. So why did we go through all of this? Well, to be quite frank, I have no clue. The only reason you might want to do this is that you can use multiple lines of code here, which means that if you have a bit more logic that you want to use, you can do it quite easily using this IIFE. But for this exact example, you might just be better off creating a variable or a constant. But moving on to cursed snippet number 10, 
In this example, I'm going to create a variable called entry of type integer, which will equal 10. Now, when we try to print this, you'll notice that we're going to get some syntax highlighting that entry is not defined. And when we run this, we're going to get a name error because we did not define entry. What the hell is going on here? Why does this not work? Why am I still developing in the age of AI? Now, personally, I would be quite curious to see if AI can understand why this does not work. So let's ask AI, why does this not work? And AI, if it's intelligent enough, should understand immediately that we're using a Cyrillic E. And if we were to tap on OK and just format this slightly so you guys can see it as well. So as you can see, AI was able to spot it immediately. The issue is that the variable name on line one uses a Cyrillic E. And this is the perfect way to torture your colleagues because personally, I can't see the difference between this E and the E on my Latin keyboard. Both of these look exactly the same to me. But the first one here is the Cyrillic E. And maybe I should actually change this to Cyrillic. I know that Bulgarians take this very personally, so I will change that. But as you can see, we have two different numbers here. And this is the Unicode of the Cyrillic E versus the Unicode of the Latin E. So that's something pretty cursed that you can do in Python. Now I'm sure that some linters out there can catch this ahead of time. I know that this can easily become a common mistake, especially if you have a Cyrillic keyboard, you might accidentally type this in when you're just trying to refer to the regular E. Now I don't really know how close the regular E is to the Cyrillic E on the keyboard, so that might just be one of the craziest mistakes ever but it's still a possibility. And when that happens, it's nice to be warned about that. Unfortunately, with my current configuration, I do not get warned about that. So have fun with using lookalikes in Python. And finally, let's look at curse snippet number 11. For this example, we have a matrix that contains these four lists of integers or three lists of integers. And what we want to do is flatten that. And not only flatten that, we also want to filter the even numbers and square them but only if the original row index plus the column index is odd. So usually you can do that with a lot of for loops and a lot of checks, but we're going to do this using a list comprehension. As you can see, if we were to zoom out, we have a beautiful list comprehension, which was used to simplify our code, obviously. So here we have a number for sublist in row column squared, if the row idx plus column modulus operator two is equal to one and row column modulus operator two is equal to zero, else none for column in range length of row for row IDX, row in enumerate matrix for number in sublist if number is not none. How do you like them apples? If we format this, we'll get something quite silly like this. It pretty much took away the list comprehension part from the list comprehension and turned it into regular code. But what matters at the end of the day is that the result is calculated. As you can see, we got the result we were hoping for. But yeah, those were 11 cursed snippets of Python code. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you have any cursed Python snippets of your own or what makes you really cringe in Python. I would love to hear about that in the comment section down below. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.